This is the match. This is the big show. This is the America's Cup. Lenore Rossoff, Brada Pirelli against Emirates Team New Zealand. It's pretty obvious that the bots are very similar in performance. Alarm clocks just went off all over Italy. Get out of bed and let's watch some sailboat racing. Well, I truly believe we are the underdogs. Emirates Team New Zealand being left in the wake of Luna Rossa in race three. We're taking on Team New Zealand at home. They're the favourites. Nobody in New Zealand saw this coming. Everybody in Italy saw this coming. Emirates Team New Zealand crossed the line to complete race three, but they don't get the point. Yeah, we obviously don't like to lose the first race of a day, but it doesn't really affect, you know, how you go into the second one. There's five million people sailing that boat. Emirates Team New Zealand look at this point on track to level it up. Yeah, well, I think it's always nice to get wins on the board. Scorecard now, Emirates Team New Zealand two, Luna Rossa two. We prove it that if we can, uh that we can win the America's Cup, I think. There is nothing in this match. It's two all. It's the first to seven. Pick this one at your peril. The results do the talking, and you have to look at the scoreline, and so far the scoreline has both teams pretty even. Day three of the 2021 America's Cup match live from Aotearoa, New Zealand. A nautical battle being sailed on the beautiful waters of the Hauraki Gulf that wrap around Tamaki Makaurau, Auckland. This edition of the match is turning into a classic. Defender and challenger of record cannot be separated and honours are shared at two wins apiece. The cup was once referred to as New Zealand's Cup. As we head into another day of racing, right now, it's anyone's cup. To confirm that in simple terms, the first team to take seven race wins wins the cup. Well, both are five wins away from glory. What that means is that we're heading into next week to find a winner. Today, the defender has the much talked about port entry for race five, Lunorosa Starboard. That then is flipped for race number six. It is time to get busy. Your international commentary team has double Olympic gold medalist Shirley Robertson on chase one. Ineos, Team UK grinder, Freddie Carr and Halley one. Former Artemis skipper Nathan Outeridge in the booth beside our Commodore. North South's president, Kenny Reid. And Kenny, you know, today feels like a good day. Well, today's dock out back in COVID level one here in Auckland was a real dock out. Talk about support. Thousands gathered along the waterfront to cheer on their sailing stars. So if it wasn't obvious to this team and their leader, Grant Dalton, that they have a few pairs of eyes staring at them, well, now they know. An entire nation is literally sitting on the edge of their seats. Nathan Outeridge, given this massive support, can the Italians gain back the momentum and quiet the crowds? Well, Kenny, don't you worry about the support for Italy here. There might not be as many people at their base for the dock out here in Auckland, but they still seem to find a way to make plenty of noise. They are Italian, after all. And let's not forget the 60 million people back home in Italy who have just woken up at 4 a.m. to cheer on their favourite team. But you've got to admit, when you see the number of New Zealand fans that have shown up today, it must feel a little bit intimidating to be on that Italian boat. So let's focus on the business end. We're talking about match racing, and starts, as we have seen, are critical. Well, starts are always critical in match racing, as far back as match racing has been held, and this is no different, but Nathan, we'd certainly have some statistics that are starting to lean towards Port Tack coming in, really having an advantage. Well, it seems like Port Entry has a huge advantage. The numbers don't lie, as you say, 100% of the races so far have been won by the Port Entry. And if you get behind, you need some leadership, as happened yesterday on Emirates Team New Zealand. Glenn Ashby, the skipper in Bermuda, clearly still part of the leadership group, especially with such a young core. He had a little lecture in between races, didn't he? He did, the helmet came off. Helmet's coming off, that means business. Calmed everyone down, and after going down 2-1, they had a lot of saving to do. It was an essential save, and it was a great save for Team New Zealand. Race five of the match in the 36th America's Cup match is incoming. Get ready.
these are the men in black. Emirates Team New Zealand really showed us something yesterday. No matter what Pete Burling says in the press conferences, there are some high expectations for this team here in their home waters. Like the All Blacks in rugby, Kiwis expect perfection from their preeminent sports teams. After losing the first race yesterday, the difference between being down 3-1 and finishing tied at 2-2 is a lot more than one simple race. It's the difference between a nation onside versus a nation on edge. I think for us, the more racing we do, um, the better it is. You know, the, the other guys, the Lunar Rossa guys, have, have done a lot more racing than we have, obviously. Um, and I think for us, every, every race we do is, uh, is, is a benefit. So looking forward to getting into it today. Here are the pride of the Tufosi. There's no question that Lunar Rossa, Prada Prelia really are happy with the current status. Two wins each is a scorecard that I'm sure sits well with Francesco Bruni and Jimmy Spittle. And at yesterday's press conference, I could see in their eyes they are starting to believe that they might just cause an upset here in Auckland. But a part of me is starting to wonder if they need to make their move now. It seems like all the additional racing they had through the Prada Cup has given them a small advantage. But as each race goes by, are Emirates Team New Zealand catching up? Today could be make or break. We as Luna Rossa have done uh, all the correct step to get here, uh, winning all the regatta we've done, and uh, we're very happy with the preparation we have where we are with the boat. I feel like uh, MST New Zealand has, uh, has a little bit more pressure on them, defending the cup here in-house, and, so, and we are the underdog. So we're happy where we are, and we're just going to go out there and do 100% of what we can. Today, the racing will be held out on the Haraki Gulf on Course A, thought to be the more stable of the courses with regards to land masses being in the way of the wind flow, a two minute start sequence is then followed by a three lap windward lured course with 1.6 mile legs, finishing downwind. Current on the course will be coming in or running against the boats when they're sailing upwind at just about over a half a knot. Really not a lot of current when it goes to, uh, when it comes to boats that are sailing at 40 plus knots. On the other hand, the breeze will always be a major factor. Similar conditions to yesterday with a seven to 10 knot northeasterly sea breeze, but likely decreasing as the afternoon goes along. So given these conditions, the starts are still a major factor. So let's go up to somebody up in the sky who's, who's been actually sailing on these boats, Freddie Carr, grinder on Ineos up in Heli 1. Do you think there's a real advantage to starting uh, coming in from the port tax side as the stats show, or is there just a coincidence here? Oh, it's hard to say, Kenny. To be honest, if you'd asked me maybe three months ago before we got into this round robin in the America's Cup, then uh, I'd have said no, but the stats speak for themselves, mate. The port entry has a more simple route to get an even start. And looking at the race course, Kenny, this is going to be a day of pressure versus shift. The, sh the breeze is bending right around Rangatoto, but because of the spectator fleet on the right, there's no wind there. All the breeze is on the left-hand side of the course. Let's go down onto the water, Shirley Roberts. Man, I reckon, Shirley, there's a lot of nerves and they'll be very high in both these teams. Oh, nerves of steel. That's what's going to be key today. Like an epic final to a tennis grand slam. Games going back and forth, back and forth. No one dropping serve. The pressure, it's building. Someone's got to lose, Stephen. And who's going to blink first? And for the Kiwi team, they're trying to stay cool in front of a massive home crowd. They call Emirates Team New Zealand the team of five million. And it feels like most of that team have turned up to show their support. The racetrack, the stadium is engulfed with Kiwi fans. And Stephen, a massive sense of expectation. What a day for racing. Emirates Team New Zealand and Ford, Luna Rosa Parada Pirelli on starboard. And we talk about the crowds. It's a glorious afternoon for America's Cup racing. And you just get the sense that New Zealand's suddenly have come alive with the magic of the America's Cup. Hi, everyone. This is the uh, Royal New Zealand Air Force Formation Thunder Crew. Flying down the harbour at 500 feet, we'll be uh, past North Head, looping around Rangitoto and back up the viaduct to Finerpo. We wish Team New Zealand all the best today. As we say, we'll fly the plane, you fly the boat. Cheers and go well. What a wonderful moment. Squadron leader Ian Tuke, that's right. The uncle of Blair Tuke, the 
flight control of Emirates Team New Zealand in their T6 Texan Beechcraft. How cool was that? It is a magnificent day for racing. This is the race committee. The wind sampling is complete and this race will start on schedule. Three minutes and 43 seconds in counting to the start of race. And look at the crowds that are on the Vardak Harbour. They cannot wait for this thing to get on. It is jam-packed. Look at that. If you're watching around the world in some 196 countries, yes, you can get a little bit jealous. But right now, lads, it's time to go racing. It's time to go racing. And this crowd in the water, Nathan, you know, it's, it was always interesting when I, in my day, back in the day when, when I was racing these things, you see the crowds before the start, but as soon as the starting gun goes, everything disappears. And it's just absolutely to the race itself and focusing on what you have to do. 100% oh, right. We might have boundaries. The spectators might be a little bit closer than probably what was when you were racing here in Auckland all those years ago. But you put the blinkers on when racing begins. It's you, it's the other boat, it's the shifts, and all that noise is gone. You know, Stephen was saying, you know, there's so much pressure on these guys and the fans are going to help them. They're not thinking about them right now. And then finally, you're underway. I mean, do the nerves suddenly go away as well? Yeah, I think so. I think they definitely do. Whatever sport you play, athletes, want, athletes know how to focus. And focus means, like, like Nathan said, the blinkers or the blinders, as we would say. Put the blinders on and just deal with the task at hand. Virtual eye giving you a beautiful Too view late. of what the stadium course looks like out on course A. In two minutes and ten seconds, yeah, Emirates Team New Zealand are allowed to enter the pre-start area. Remember, port entry, 100% success rate so far in this regatta. And in come Emirates Team New Zealand. Look to the right of the screen, starboard entry. That's Luno Rosa Prada Prelli. Remember, we're at two wins apiece here. Here we go, turning. So what I'm most interested in today is what is the starboard entry boat going to do to try and break this curse of the starboard entry? Is it a myth or is it real? I think in these lighter wings that double manoeuvre gets really tough. We've already seen a little bit of a different, a break in the action where Prada is actually sticking themselves well down to lured or to the right side of Emirates Team New Zealand, kind of taking almost like a blocking move towards the jibe that is likely coming on the red boat. Just watch the green mark to lure. So at the moment, the pit's closed. He looked at jumps, yeah, he's jumping. Yeah. Easy leading, easy leading. Up, 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 up. Four out, two. One. Yep. No, turn up, Lenny. I'll be 24 and off. On the wind here. Okay. Boots coming up. Mine now. Still really early on pit side. Yeah, it's high. Little high mine here. Well, building. Yeah. 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 Building goes. Yeah. Massive. Both both take back. Take quite on. slow yeah. here, Nathan. Yeah. Really yeah. slow and dangerously yeah. close yeah. to yeah. being yeah. off yeah. the foils. Yeah. There you see that shot there. 20 knots is about the bottom speed that can keep it on the foil. Prada with the bigger foils can hang there a little bit longer. Both boats really struggling right now, or just early and killing time. Trimming up. I might hear a little. We will, we will gain time on the, the gas if we can. Anna Rossa looking very strong General, at the moment. We will gain time on the wave, okay? The question is, are they early? Kiwis no, are just, just trying to get up in the air yes. right now. Nathan, I'm not so sure they're out of the water yet. Uh, and they're using that kind of that 90 degree uh, wind angle to pop out of the water. Got them right down into bad air and in a really bad spot. Okay, just charge here, charge Pass them along. Trimming up slowly. No worries. Trimming up, go. Yeah, we're just going to get to a taking speed. Yeah. Time to go racing. We, uh, it's race five of the 36th America's Cup match. And Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli across the line first. Wow. A little longer then, we hold. Just a little. The smaller foils in the lighter winds and the pre start, and you can't get caught slow. That was leading back a little bit early on Emirates Team New Zealand. Having to go slow, dropping off the foils, Three. and having the smaller foils Two. and struggling to take off. We all knew that one of the factors going into this was going to be the foil size and the ability of this boat to actually do down speed maneuvers in the pre-start. Would that be an advantage? Could they put themselves in a position to make it an advantage? They did, and they absolutely crushed that start. So much for that port tank entry favor. I've been trying to tell you that, Nathan, now for a couple of days. It's just <laughs> hey, man, the numbers don't lie. <laughs> now we're going to adjust the numbers. Let me just get my uh, spreadsheet out here. Better pressure left. 
Surely we finally broke the the, uh, the jinx, the port tack jinx. A massive error by Pete. I mean, you heard the slight panic in Blair Took's voice, you know, saying, you know, we're really, really early for this. And, and he knows that they have smaller foils and yet, you know, slowed down. A, a huge error. But it, it's closing up here, Kenny. This is, this is far from over. So straight away into the Lena Ross are proud of Pirelli, about a 200 metre lead. It's interesting, Freddie, when you were talking before about the wind out there, you are saying all the spectators on the right were making it softer. Is it still looking that way? You know, both boats heading to the left. What do you see from the helicopter, mate? Yeah, 100%. There must be 2,000 boats down the right-hand side of the course, and the breeze is just lifting up over there. I reckon there's probably 7.5 knots on the right, and there's 9.5 knots on the left. And it's really interesting that Prada stood on and sailed into a little bit more pressure. They want the left hand side from what I'm seeing. Not exactly the start that the 2,000 boats out there were expecting to see here today, Stephen. Not at all. We're in the opening leg of six in race five of the match, and well, surely said, massive mistake by Emirates Team New Zealand at the start, and we've talked about the starts win the start and you go a long way to winning the race so there's still five and a bit legs to go but it's going to be hard using what you have to your advantage you always you're trying to figure out how to how you match up against the other boat nathan and there's no question we've been saying it all along this boat has a slow speed italian boat has a slow speed that they have consistently used to their advantage in all three of the rounds and man we just saw it again and they used it in that pre-start by jumping they went early and by turning you know how the, the, the Port Tech entry boat, Team New Zealand, gets to choose when they come back. And Jimmy Spill and Francesco Brini said, no, we're going to go back a little bit earlier because we know we can handle sailing slower on our bigger floors. So they happily took the lead. Both boats got really slow, and then they just climbed up out of that 17 knots, got on the foil, and great judgment by uh, Francesco Bruni, Jimmy Spill, and, and the whole crew on board. It's, there's more than two people on that, but, man, it was... Uh, Played really well in that start to those guys. Speed it, speed it, speed it, speed it. Three, two, one. Top a little pressure out of this. Every Italian who's popped out of bed about a half an hour ago have arrived to a really nice site for them, haven't they? Early in the piece, 200 some metre lead to Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. Again, this will be a huge psychological advantage, nay, blow if they can hold on to this lead all the way through the race. Yeah, we to break the momentum of what potentially Emirates Team New Zealand might have had. Just hearing a little bit of chat on board Luna Rossa there about what they're going to do at the top. They're laying the top marks right now. Team New Zealand aren't. And it's softer on that right-hand side, as Freddie was saying, and I think they want to do a right-hand turn early jibe and stay in phase with that pressure. Yeah, I think we stick with this uh, early, early jibe, boys. Yeah, yeah. copy. Uh, no rush, because I want to give gas on him uh, up with Yeah. So, yeah, just keep an eye on him after the barrel away. Yeah, I'll start yeah. your turn on the mark. Right. Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli, go around the top there, mark. Two. Cool and confident. Just listen to the comms going on. They are so relaxed, and their fans will be lapping this up wherever they are around the world. So Emirates Team New Zealand will come into the gate in a deficit. Really, on the first leg, Kenny, when you take a look at this, that deficit is going to be a healthy one in favour of Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. The right down to every little detail as well. You heard Francesco Bruni talk about, let's continue here on Port Jive, and we actually give them dirty gas. By gas, they mean disturbed air coming off the sails as they're passing going upwind. So no matter how far ahead you are, you're always trying to make it a, a, a bigger distance. 
Yeah, One thing here, though, Nathan, we have seen a fast boat downwind in uh, in the Kiwi boat, and the statistics absolutely bear this out. The Kiwi boat is quicker downwind. There is no question. Yeah, we've been looking at the numbers from the last few days, and speeds of up to what is it? Three extra knots boat speed downwind. VMG gains as well, so similar angles but faster speeds. But I tell you what, if you're 200. 80 metres behind, you're going to have to be a lot faster to close this race now. Or alternatively, you're going to want the boat leading to make a mistake. And we saw yesterday with the problem with the, the board going down and not going down, uh, cost, potentially cost the Italians the race. Yeah, nice copy. pressure above us here. I think we just go to the boundary at the moment. Well. Surely the uh, Italians are not really keeping in check with the Kiwis or allowing them to break off to the other side of the race course. And, nice and uh, it kind of shows that maybe Freddie is exactly good. correct. Look, that yep. They like this side of the race course that they're heading towards, don't they? Three, two, one, turning down. Yeah, I, mean, I was quite surprised, Kenny, that they headed to the right-hand side of the track, you know, tucked right in under those spectator boats. There's like a good one or two knots different at the top of the top of the track, and down the bottom it's it's much more even. And I could see that on the I have the wind speeds coming off the two yachts. And Emirates Team New Zealand on the left hand side of the track did have a you know a knot or two more. They're also going faster. Yeah. Okay. We sure get punished in maneuvers though on a day like today though, don't you? You want to they're, they're Absolutely talking about minimizing maneuvers. They are, and you know, they end up bouncing down the boundary. So, as Shirley said, Luna Rossa decided to go to that right hand side where all the spectator boats are first. Then they're going to bounce over to the favoured side, and now they're going to bounce back over there as Team New Zealand are bouncing sort of opposite. So, Luna Rossa are going to go over there twice, and Team New Zealand are only going to go over there once. So, that, the way the geometry of the course works out, it's uh, could be a bit of a gain here for Team New Zealand, only going to that side of the run one time. Little gain to us there. Nice. <coughs> what, Mark, is he going to be that around? The noise that we hear right on board is the hydraulics right. actually be moving okay. that that highly loaded, this is the clue of a twin skin mainsail, of a double skinned mainsail uh, back and forth. And the hydraulics are driven by all these guys grinding, grinding their grinders down below, pumping towards creation of hydraulic pressure. That's how all these sails are, are moved around. Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli about to complete oh, the boys. second leg Got of the six. Turning. Three, two, one, slowly up. 32 seconds at the previous mark. We know that it might be maybe a little bit less with nice the job. downwind speed of Emirates Team New Zealand, but doesn't matter. There's one boat in front and one boat chasing, and you know which way that is. A little bit of gas from him to get through. Yeah, yeah. Right, now we got a boundary. Just gonna get through this gas. Emirates Team New Zealand now heading towards yep. the bottom gate for the first time. No sound of panic on the comms, just getting about their business, trying to find how they can drag in this Italian boat. And look at that, no game, 32 seconds again at the second mark. Five, right? Minus one. I drive. Coming up from the bridge. See, it, see. It. Good pressure in fiber. Coming up more. Coming up. See. It. Good there. It's quite a relationship between the, the guy driving the boat and the guy trimming the main. So Francesco Brunida was talking to Pietro Sibello about the angle he's driving. If he wants to point up a bit, got to trim the main on a bit more. So that. That relationship is crucial. Checking probably in about uh, 
Okay, this, this, this is the this is the lead off the start though. You know the the boat behind is at a disadvantage because the boat ahead gets to control the race course and throw some bad air when they want to. But I'll tell you what, kind of like race. This reminds me of race one. The boat behind is not getting further behind. That means they are not slow in this condition. That Kiwi boat. Uh, we just got a speed yes. attack as well. Yes. Come on. We've been trying to get information out of the guys over the last few days, the sailors on board, as to what it is that's making it so hard to overtake. You know, we, we've seen in, I guess, when I was racing in Bermuda in the America's Cup, there were quite a lot more lead changes. And I think the bigger difference that I've got out of the sailors so far is that these boats are they're bigger, they're heavier, they have more sail area which produces a bigger wind shadow and the boat speeds are quite similar. We're not seeing people fall off the foils and tacks and things like that. The error rate is quite low. So once you're behind, it's quite hard. Freddie, you've done a lot of racing on these boats here in Auckland. You got any insights for us on what your options are when you are the boat behind it and how much of a penalty is it You know, when you get the wind shadow? Oh, they, I mean, in, like in all forms of sailing, Nate, the, the wind shadow is going to kill you. Up here in the sky, mate, you can draw a line down the middle of the course, left to right. Prada are protecting the left-hand side. They keep it standing out into about a knot and a half more breeze compared to the right, where they're bouncing Emirates Team New Zealand. The other thing is the step up in the tax that the Prada do compared to Emirates Team New Zealand is unbelievable. The rate of turn, and they're just stepping up the ladder in every tack. Emirates Team New Zealand have a much harder turn rate to try and complete the tack quickly. It's a bit of shift this time for us. Well, Kenny, I had to chat with some of the Luna Rosa guys no, today about how come the hook moment. never works in that pre-start scenario. Out, and they said Coming just up. that, that the, the gas, the disturbed Two. air is so One, big that you never cut through it successfully. So I think it's become much more of an issue than perhaps they thought it was at the beginning of racing. And we're only really looking at, right now I'm looking at some wind graphs, um, some true wind direction wind graphs, and there's really only about 10 degree wind shifts on the water, which in sailing terms isn't a whole lot. So that's another way for the boat behind to try to find something, and, and when there's not much there, it makes it an awful lot harder. Hey, There's that wind graph that you were talking about. You can see it's just sort of flipping left and right. About 8 to 10 degrees. You know? Not much, not enough to really get in phase. You know, races we saw earlier in the round robins were the southwesters or anything off the land, and you get much more better shifts. But this light sea breeze, which is very, very common here in March, a light 10 knot sea breeze that's stable. And out on course A today, Maybe. not many passing lanes out there. Man, they're pounding them to the right. The, the Italians are pounding the Kiwis back to the right. But I'll tell you what, the, the, the meters behind are not getting larger. They're actually just kind of hanging in around 200, maybe even a little under right now. So again, the, 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 the Kiwi boat has a fast mode. We know that. It, it always sails more distance, but man, are they fast, both upwind and downwind. Little build here. Little build pressing. Look at this flat they sail with those sails in, in what is, you know, what, you wouldn't even be hiking on most normal tour boats right now. You wouldn't even have people on the rail, and these guys are sailing with board flat sails. Plenty of apparent wind going across that boat. 10 knots of breeze, what, 25, 30 knots of speed? That's a lot of breeze across the deck. That's why they're so flat. Not foiling, on the other hand, you got to really camber them up, get the boat going. Yeah, very tight on I think he could be around our mark at the moment. About to complete the halfway stage in this fifth race of the America's Cup match in 2021 out of the Hauraki Golf, this course A, in front of a magnificent spectator fleet, and it's all Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli at the moment. Remembering it is a two-all scoreline. How much of a psychological advantage will it be again to win first race of the day? Because they seem to have a, a little bit of a habit of doing that. Looking at the clock on the bottom right of the screen, it appears that there's been small gains by Emirates Team New Zealand. 32 seconds at the bottom gate. They've picked up 10 seconds. That's a good upwind gain. The 
It's pretty impressive considering that they were getting tacked on the whole time and going up what we believe and what Freddie's been talking about is less pressure on that side. Freddie, did we miss something? Did the pressure change on that upwind or is Team New Zealand going fast? Yeah, I think Team New Zealand are going far, Nathan. I didn't see anything that suggested they should uh, have an advantage in shift or pressure, so they must have got the boat really dialed in on this second upwind. Nice lefty, nice lefty for us, Ben. Okay, now. You know, Freddie was referencing the boats and their turning the ability uh, going yeah, up wind. Yeah, 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 look yeah. at, the, yeah, I mean, talk that. about protecting yeah, the left yeah, side yeah, of the course. All those down blue down. dots is Luna Rosa. All those yellow dots are are the Kiwis. Luna Rosa wanted the left-hand side of the course, and they took it almost exactly down the middle of the race course. Phenomenal. That's great. That's great. Uh, a great show by Virtual Eye there, guys. That's match racing. Yep. Bottom is even. Very different downwind though, isn't it? The boat oh, ahead no, can't affect the boat behind, so you end up here. selling your own race downwind, Numbers. and then upwind is when you go on the attack or the defense. A bit faster, yeah. Up. To get a Quick look at the numbers though, and look at this downwind at the moment here. by Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. They have really stretched that lead Stand out. Boys. That's probably the largest lead so Day far three. on the race. Two. Just turning down, getting the puff, just riding it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Board going. Nice one. Look at the heart rates there. Take a look at the grinders and what they're doing. And Freddie, you know all about that. Where, where is the key point where the heart really starts popping? Yeah, we're, com we're coming into that key point now. At the moment, all the sails are very deep. The chip car is outboard. You're looking to get the most power out of the sails. So effectively, everything's very eased. But we're coming into the last 10% of the downwind. You've got to start getting ahead of the game. You've got to start stretching out the sails. You're already working really hard as the grinders because you've just come out of the jibe. Now you've got to move it up a gear and start getting the boat into upwind mode. You slingshot around the bottom, trim the mainsail on up to big, big tonnages, and then stand by tack. It just does not stop on the bottom half of the course. Why wouldn't anybody want to do that? Well, I know Freddie would probably rather be in the <laughs> yeah, match right now, but enjoy the view up on Alley 1, Freddie oh, Carr. Enjoy. You deserve it. It sounds like you deserve it. <laughs> Any other Team UK grinder giving us that true insight to the, the work rate that the grinders have to do. They're working the geometry exactly how you would expect, Nathan, right? They're coming in, they're going to take the side of the course already. They're already thinking ahead. These runs and the geometry and where you jive on the runs is working on where you want to be on the upwind leg. Uh, well done by Luna Rosa. And it is Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli who will complete the fourth lead leg, excuse me, still in front of the defender Emirates Team New Zealand. We keep using this one word, but flawless still comes to mind yeah, when you think second. about um, Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. It is, yeah. wow, I mean, and it comes goes right back to before the Prada Cup final. The one key area they improved on was communication and getting everything right, and they are just rolling it right now as Emirates Team New Zealand finally gets that mark rounding and start the penultimate leg of race number five in this America's Cup match. They lose a little bit of time on that downwind. That's probably the first time they've fallen behind a little bit on the downwind. And I could hear in the comments in the background, you know, Francesco Bruni saying, my rate, my trap, which means they've tacked. So instantly, Luna Rossa is setting them up again to just to keep bouncing them up the right-hand side of the course. You think they give them any clear air here? Absolutely not. <laughs> That's the right answer. <laughs> Would you? No, not a chance. <laughs> and uh, turning. There's a shock. And turning. All over Italy, everybody I talk to, Luna Rosa is front page everywhere. 
Yep. It is uh, it is a phenomenon. It has yeah, turned a into a phenomenon. It, it is well. when you think that football is so huge in, in Europe, and, and they've also got a team that races in Formula One called Ferrari. But right now, this is their Ferrari. Luna Rossa, Prada, Pirelli, and, and surely that, that must be so in, just encouraging for this team every time they hit the water. Uh, Stephen, you know, I spoke to Max Serena, the skipper of Luna Rossa, about how big it was at home. He said it's it's the same as the 1982 Soccer World Cup when Italy won. You know, the entire nation was behind that team and the momentum, the support is growing day by day for this team. They might not be here in Auckland cheering them on on the, on the boat, but goodness, they're all getting up in the middle of the night. That's big. That is big. But again, look at these these distances are just almost, they're on a string back there. Once they start going up wind, it, 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 there's no yo-yo here. This is, they're on a string. They're in that 200 meter range. And that means that boat behind is actually hanging in there pretty good in a tough spot. They're hanging in there, but they can't break through that 150 meter mark, can they? Unless you can get inside 150 meters, 100, and then get into 50 meters and start putting pressure. Luna Russell will just keep doing this all day long. It, it just comes back to that start and brilliant execution really by Luna Russell, that start and setting themselves up for another race win at this stage. True wind speed at nine knots. Natural speed sitting around 21. It's still big as belief. And that's their, that's their slow speed. I love the upper yeah. left-hand corner where you see the foils going out of the water, that cant angle of 60 degrees. There's a lot of variation as to how teams were playing those cant angles and trying different angles in different conditions and even changing the angles during maneuvers. So it's uh, that is always going to be uh, one of those features that people same, try guys. different yeah, things. <laughs> yep. This has become a kind of, we, we, we don't need commentators today. I'll tell you what's going to happen. They're going to tack on them and protect the left side of the race course. Done. Thank you. <laughs> what I found so interesting is that camera angle we saw before behind the boat. When they exited the tack, they were still pointing higher than Emirates Team New Zealand. So, you know, I, there's a lot of speculation about the loading of these two boats, and I think it's pretty clear there's a pattern developing. This boat here, Luna Rossa likes to sail higher, and a little bit slower, and Emirates Team New Zealand like to stick the bow down. They like to get it rumbling, go yeah, fast. There's, and your, there's your case in you, point. You can see your angles there, and it's really hard when you're the boat behind to live anywhere if you don't have that high mode. You can't live on someone's hip. You can't gauge off them. Really hard when you're behind. When you're in front, that mode's great. Not a problem at all. Be interesting if the boundary saves the Kiwis coming over here right now. Will Will Lunarosa get to the boundary, to, to the edge of the race course, and tack and actually have to give the other boat clear air? Right with them, but they, they stayed clean through most of that. I give, I give, I give the Kiwis credit during those that last exchange. They did pretty well considering it looked like they're in the gas, but maybe the the wind was actually coming around to lure. But the fascinating thing here is that Luna Ross are probably going to lay the top mark, and Emirates Team is going to have one more tack. So that's another 50, 60 meters they're probably going to lose for this tack starting to get really Pick tough up. for them now. When you talk about us. control, it seems to come, you look at this boat, when they're in front, they yeah. always, so always look in control. They're not looking over their shoulder at all. Still 200 meters though, yeah. in, a fast, in a fast boat on a run to go. This is not breathe easy weather yet, if you're an Italian fan. Well, if you're an Italian fan, for the last time in race number five of this Cup match on course A. You're leading, heading towards the home mark. But nervous. <laughs> I'm not so sure right now, Kenny. I'm going to say right now that this boat is being sailed beautifully and they are, again, in control. They have dictated terms from the get-go. Not their best rounding, though, I have to admit. Emirates Team New Zealand still the chaser in race number five. 27 seconds at the fourth mark. 23 at the final mark before they head home. 
I don't know, you've got to say, if you are able to close a bit of time down going upwind while sailing in someone's dirt, your boat's going up fast. Up and um, you know, I think after this race is going to be, once again, another regroup. Is it another helmet off situation? I wouldn't be surprised if the helmet comes off again <laughs> by a few people and there's a huddle and they they dissect the start. Because besides the start, they've sailed very well. The boat's sailed very well. The geometry's going well. They're getting pushed around the course, obviously, but they're doing well to keep it as close as they can. But if you're giving them 20 seconds, 15 seconds at the start, you're not going to win. Surely, are they is, are there passing lanes out there right now? Oh, it's a, it's a beautiful day out here, Kenny. You know, textbook summer sea breeze day. It's very very even and. Luna Rossa, they've bossed this race course, haven't they? They've gone exactly where they wanted to go. Currently just right down the middle and the maximum pressure. It's hard to see. Barring a mistake or, you know, a bit of a, a massive error by Luna Rossa, it's hard to see how the Kiwis are going to get past. A little pressure on now. And a little lefty again. Calm, cool, and collected. There's, a, there's really, there's no other way. Our, they're supposed to be commentating for us. We're, 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 we're playing into their hands, and they're not giving us anything, Steve. Well, we could say that uh, Emirates Team New Zealand uh, handed them the ball and said, yeah. "Go run with it." Three, two, one. Breeze is right up around 10 knots for both boats right now. Still, kind of a uh, 12 or so degree wind shifts across the water. That. Tide is the current is with the boats right now and when you think that they are very close to snatching their third win of an America's Cup match, a team that has had its confidence building and building and building. How big a deal now as you head into race number six? It's a, it feels a bit like moving day in the Golf Masters. When you want to make a play, you make the big play. Well, they're making a big play. They're, they're not aiming for the center of the green anymore. They're aiming for the pins, you know? And, and, and it all comes, I think the second race of the day, Nathan, is the pressure race because you're the Kiwis right now. All of a sudden, what pressure you had, which I'm, I'm assuming is considerable, is absolutely ratcheted up another level. Well, yeah, the pressure's on both teams. Obviously, Team New Zealand are down, and they need to level today. These guys, they want to convert. They want to go 4-2 up. You know, if they can convert, they're on their way. But if, if Prada don't win the next one and it's back to even, then it's another breath of relief for everyone in New Zealand. And uh, we start again tomorrow. Fantastic sport, isn't it? <laughs> We are in the final seconds of race number five in the America's Cup match, and it has been another nice dominant one. performance by the right, challenge of the record. One. Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli will cross the line and go 3 2 up in the match. Uh, step by. Two. And why wouldn't you celebrate if you're a small contingent surrounded by Kiwi fans? Make the most of it as Emirates Team New Zealand come across and now go into a thinking mode. How do we go and win race number six? They're not making it easy on themselves in those pre-starts. When does when do we start ratcheting up the pressure on on uh, Mr. Burling? You know, give it a couple more days. <laughs> in your press conference questions. Yeah. <laughs> Confirmation of the result in race five of the 36th America's Cup match. Luna Rosa, Parada Pirelli take the W by 18 seconds. Man, oh man, have we got a match on our hands. Going back to that pre-start, we touched on it so many times in the last couple days. In the last few months, this pre-start has become everything. Prada absolutely 
used their strength. As Nathan said, they led back and then got into this high slow mode. They were both early for the start, but they can pop up on their foils quicker and more easily. It really put the Kiwis uh, in a tough spot right out of the blocks. And guess what? They went off to it. They had a 200 meter lead here within about the first three minutes in the race. And that almost didn't change throughout the race. Yeah, give or take 100 meters or so. But it, it was it was using it was a classic example of using the strengths of your yeah. boat to your advantage and absolutely working the other boat uh, when you had a chance. And man, oh man, do these guys, when they have a chance, at this stage they're talking about, let's go downwind and stay on port tack for a second to deliver bad air to the other boat. They're thinking so far ahead as to how to keep putting meters on the other guy. They don't take anything for granted, Nathan. They don't take anything for granted, as you say. You give either of these teams that tiny advantage at the start, or in this case, a pretty decent advantage, they're not going to give it up that easily. And here we go. Tacking on the competition. OK, they're going to bully them up the right-hand boundary. You're either going to sail here in the bad air and just suck it and slowly lose, or you're going to have to tack. I love Shirley's word. They bossed the race course. They, they absolutely took it. They wanted that left side. Freddie Carr called it in the, in the helicopter before the race even started. He wanted the left side. Clearly, these guys wanted the left side. They absolutely controlled the upwind legs and therefore oh, controlled the, the race and uh, had a nice little uh, lead at the finish. But if you're a Kiwi fan, for sure, you know your boat is still fast enough to be in this game. You just can't make those pre-start uh, mistakes. So an 18-second victory by Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli, but more importantly, they have gone to a 3-2 lead in the cup match. Remember, they're four wins away, four wins away from lifting the old mug. How big has this race win been moving forward in this regatta? On board, Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli, we go to Francesco Baruni, who will be Quietly satisfied, very happy, Checo. But I gotta gotta say one thing here. Yesterday, Jimmy was asked in the press conference that winning from port was it a thing, and he said it's coincidence. You proved today you can win from starboard. Yeah, um, as uh, Jimmy teaches us, it was just a coincidence, <laughs> and uh, I think we did a very good job on the start. And uh, again, it proved to be an important part of the race. But also, I think we sailed a lot better than what we did uh, on that second race uh, yesterday. Uh, we did some very clean maneuvers. Uh, we sailed a lot cleaner, and uh, the performance of the boats were the boat were up there. So I think it was the start, but also, yeah, the way we sailed the boat today. Francesco, it was a, we had a graphic and we watched your path up the up one of the beats in the path of the Kiwis. It was so clear you wanted the left hand side of the race course. Is that something you decide before the race starts or is that something that just develops as the race goes along? No, I think we had a little bit of a, an edge uh, for the left uh, before entering. That's why we decided uh, to lead uh, uh, on that uh, pre start. And uh, yeah, I think uh, I'm glad we did, and I'm glad that uh, uh, it was the right call. And also, we during the race we we kept looking. The right in general was not looking as good, so we are happy to to be able to push them to the right side. Now, Francesco, awesome race, mate. Nathan here. Just a bit of a big picture question for you. It's it's March, and we know that it's always going to be a little bit lighter. How happy are you with the package and the foil size and it, the whole boat that's targeted for the conditions you're racing in today? We're very happy, Nate. I think uh, we have a more flexible um, package. Uh, we can do the high mode, we can do the fast mode. Uh, in general, Team New Zealand seems to be forced to sail higher numbers, boat spin numbers, which sometimes is good, but sometimes uh, it's a little bit of a limit, I think. Um, so I'm very happy to sail in these conditions. Thanks, Francesco. Get ready for race number six. We'll go on board uh, Emirates Team New Zealand. Peter, do you want to talk us uh, what happened at the pre-start? <coughs> yeah, well, we um, obviously just fell off the foil above them and you know, thought we had a little more time to kill than we actually did and didn't quite manage to get going again. And 
um, take off. But yeah, obviously they, they shut down the race pretty well from there. Felt like we, we fought uh, relatively hard and you know got close-ish at the finish, but they didn't give us too many options. Do you have that same feeling, Peter, that, that you know, you, you were in a detriment, they, they did a nice job of pounding you to what looked like, <coughs> at least, to the, to the bad side of the race course, but you guys hung in there. You really didn't drop back very far. You're, the boat's not slow. Yeah, well, we kind of managed to get a few little shifts, and then um, they managed to get back into the center of the course at, at times as well. I'm you know, really happy with how the boat's going, but just, uh, yeah, obviously they're, they're sailing pretty well, so you know, we, we need to do the same. Hey, Pete, Nath here. Um, obviously, tough race. I guess it's a bit of deja vu of yesterday. I'm assuming we should let you go and get to the Brains <laughs> Trust, but um, just really give us a bit of an insight to all the fans watching. What's, what's the goal for this one? Yeah, well, I think it's um, probably a click up on Breeze in the last one and what we're thinking the direction of the Breeze will go. And, yeah, we're just going to be, uh, you know, trying to tidy up that little detail on the start. You know, we just couldn't quite get going. Um, you know, we're obviously pretty small margins there, but you know, we're really happy with the way we managed to keep out of his bad air and keep the game tight. And, you know, felt like we were actually gained a fair bit on that last lap. All right, Pete, go get him. It's uh, race number six coming up. Let's look at the numbers now team and uh, crunch them all there's no question that there's been a trend here so far that the kiwis just sail faster all the time but they sail quite a bit longer distance and this is absolutely uh, no change every single race has had this same mode nathan that is quick upwind quick downwind but they sail wider angles and they sail quite a bit longer distance all right, let's take a look at the analysis, particularly the first leg. Speeds up on that first leg and just to see the differences, see the comparisons. And, and Nathan, talk us through this one. Well, this is this is a graph. This has got us, you know, the speed differences between the two boats. You can see the, the bottom speed and top speeds. And, and it's, um, you can see on average that boat, the red boat, New Zealand, is going faster. This one here, is this the VMG that pops up? So this is VMG, so you see this, the, this is, Effectively the same thing, but when they peak above that line, that's the entry to the tax, and then you see the bottom speeds after it. The VMG is the balance between the speed and the angle, and that's why those big bottom numbers across the screen, they're the ones that are uh, hurting the Kiwis. And here's potentially what the Arkley's heel is turning out to be at the moment for Emirates Team New Zealand starts with well, that high slow mode we saw we remember we saw these guys practicing against Ineos Freddie Carr is probably having a flashback up there in the helicopter right now they used it to great effect in that in that round robin in the lighter air and they did it again here they think they can pop this boat out of the water quicker and more effectively if they get both both boats slow and they did it and that's why they led back again leading back in this in this position knowing that you can get out of the water earlier looks to be pretty dominant. So they did something a little different. We wanted them to mix it up. They mixed it up, and they, guess what? The Italians made it work. Look at that. It looks like you could sort of like a magic carpet. You could walk all the way back to Auckland on that spectator for glorious on course. Hey, onto the water is Shirley Robertson. Well, Shirley, when you talk about a psychological advantage, you go Luna Rossa Prada Rally in the positive right now. Oh, Stephen, we wondered who would blink first, didn't we? And uh, it wasn't it wasn't the man of ice, Jimmy Spiddle, that was for sure. Um, I can see, you know, and on the Kiwi boat having a chat about what to do. And, and Glenn Ashby said this morning that yesterday the final race was, they felt it was a must win race. And today it's no different. I mean, the pressure is on for them. Um, they, need, they need a result. Pete needs to deliver in that pre start. Freddie Carr up in Halley one. Take it from what Shirley Robertson just said. Pete Burling's got to get this start sorted and very quick. Yeah, but they, he's got great people around him. You look at the coaching group around him. 
with Ray Davies. You look at Glenn Ashby, who was obviously at the forefront yesterday when they lost the first race yesterday. There's absolutely no doubt the performance team will be on the boat now. They'll be talking through what went wrong in that start. But actually, it's super important just to move that start to one side. That's done and dusted. It's all about race six. Let's get our heads on for race six, our starboard entry. Let's keep the boat ripping in the pre-start and go again. So this is the America's Cup we're watching. We're heading towards race number six. It's affectionately known as the Old Mug, an impressive piece of silverware. It stands 1.1 metre high, weighs over 14 kilograms. And over the course of 170 years, it's been held aloft just 36 times. And some have spent a lifetime pursuing it. Others, like Peter Burling, are in an exclusive club. They won on debut. <laughs> America's Cup's an incredibly special thing. You know, I think it's a young fella growing up in New Zealand, you know, I was probably too young to really remember the 95 Cup, but definitely remember in, you know, 2000, you know, when I started out sailing. Team New Zealand complete the first successful defence of the America's Cup outside America. The America's Cup is still New Zealand's Cup. Just seeing the whole country get behind, um, you know, a sporting event where New Zealand's really taking on the world was, you know, something that's pretty special and, you know, I think always something that I really wanted to be involved with as a, as a young sailor growing up. So, you know, to have the opportunity I do now to be able to represent New Zealand at, you know, the highest level of our sport, um, you know, really push the bounds in terms of technology is something that's, um, you know, incredibly exciting. You know, these boats are pretty incredible. You know, I think, yeah, every day you go out, you still, you know, kick yourself a little bit just to see how quick they actually are going. You know, they're really pushing the bounds in terms of the speed and manoeuvrability and, you know, also doing a lot of things at, at low speed that um, we perhaps probably thought they'd be worse at. You know, I was obviously involved early days with, um, you know, both the Challenger record and, and ourselves, you know, trying to come up with concepts and, you know, it's something that we kind of came up with this the mono hull and we really wanted it to be high performance. So we've kind of ended up in a, a really good place, I feel. The boats are, are pretty quick. You know, I think the thing for me that, you know, I think will blow a lot of people away, especially is how quick they go up when. Related back to on land, it's pretty staggering. You know, the peak speeds, you know, miles off 100k an hour. So, you know, if you're driving down your motorway at 100k an hour with your head out the window, you kind of you get a pretty good feel for the amount of air, you know, coming over these boats. And yeah, it was incredible to think a boat can be going that quick. There's definitely some g-forces in the corner. I think I'm always lucky because I'm generally the one. Uh, driving the boat so you kind of know where the g-forces are going to come from so you're always generally pretty braced for them but you know definitely if you're a passenger or grinding you know it's pretty hard to do your job sometimes through the g-forces. You know there's nothing wrong with being a favourite you know but at the end of the day you've got to go out there and put down a good performance and you know actually win the thing you know it's um, something you've done a lot of events in the 49er where you've been favourite but you know, at the end of the day it doesn't really change anything you know you've got to go put your best foot forward and you know, perform on the day. So you know, that's what all our hard work here is yeah, about doing. Yeah, all that saying saying is that uh, only one person gets to win the America's Cup and that's what we're trying to do. What a sight, course A and thousands of boats out there as the spectator fleet, as they start to think how Emirates Team New Zealand on their own home waters can stay in this America's Cup match. They're trailing by one match win. It's 3-2 in favour of Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli, and just a tad over 15 minutes to start of race number six. Success, victory, and winning. Those fans know all about that. Those three words pretty much sum up Francesco Bruni's sailing career. The three-time Olympians won seven world, five European, and 15 Italian championships across different classes. It's his fifth America's Cup campaign. The old mug, though, is one of the few pieces of silverware to elude his grasp. 
Sailing is really my passion, and I think water is my passion. I love water and ocean, uh, every aspect of it. My father keeps telling me that he thinks I have a little bit of salt in my veins, and uh, it's probably true. I grew up on a boat. I started when I was very young with my father, and uh, I just love it. I just love to be in open air, uh, in the water. I feel very lucky, and my passion is also my job, so um, I know that it's a luck that not everybody has, and I love it. It's a great uh, challenge, really, really a nice challenge. America's Cup is my life since a while, and it's a trophy that I never won, so uh, I've been trying many times. I definitely learned how to lose it. <laughs> I haven't learned how to win it yet. <laughs> So uh, I hope this one is really the right time. It would be one of the biggest thing in Italy's uh, sport ever. Uh, I don't know why, but when it comes to America's Cup, uh, all the Italians are sailors. <laughs> and uh, it's crazy. They, they start following uh, and they start chatting about sailing, even if they had no, ex no experience about it. They all become sailors, so I think America's Cup is a big thing for Italy. And I'm very happy that Mr. Bertelli is still trying, and uh, I hope he's going to be uh, lucky this time. Our boat is capable of winning. Every month we are going faster and faster. Every week uh, is a couple of tenths of a knot, and uh, if you sum them all up, uh, by the beginning of racing, we could see big numbers. And there will be incidents. I mean, let's face it, it's, it's hard because we are pushing the game. I know the boats are going to get closer and closer, probably not at the very beginning of the racing, uh, but um, I, I don't want to see any contact between foils. No. I don't want to think about collisions. <laughs> nah, it's something I don't want to see. <laughs> okay, boys, stand by. Batting away. There are some uh, things that are very close to Formula One, but it's not one person on, on the car, it's 11 people on board. That's for me is the biggest difference. I don't think one individual can win the cup by himself, no. I think the only way to win the cup is a teamwork. Teamwork, teamwork. I mean, it's a teamwork, everybody has to push 110%. If, if we all do that, uh, we were gonna win. Summer on the Hauraki Golf 2021 and the 36th America's Cup and enjoy it wherever you are around the world of the 196 countries taking this broadcast. That's a summer's day you want to remember. These folks here and the colours of Italy want to remember something else. They would like to see their team go up 4-2. These people, the majority of them Emirates Team New Zealand fans, want it to be 3-all at the end of the day. You know, few New Zealanders in 1995 could have avoided television commentator Peter Montgomery's famous line, the America's Cup is now New Zealand's Cup. And as the nation celebrated, a little boy watched in awe and made a promise to his grandmother. One day, he'd sail for Team New Zealand and win the America's Cup. That boy was Emirate Team New Zealand's Guy Ending. The America's Cup has always been a sort of a fantasy job, you know, the, the ultimate. My earliest uh, memory would be on sitting on a rug in, in front of a fire in, in, at Lake Taupo, staying with my grandma at the time because uh, my parents had gone over to San Diego and watching Black Magic take it out. The America's Cup is now New Zealand's Cup. International sport's oldest prize leaves the United States, this time to a different down under, New Zealand. I actually still have some of the drawings that we were doing, you know, drawing the boat, the spinnaker up. It was about five years old. I admit I was getting it drilled into me a bit that this was a big deal, but I could understand that, you know, this was this was a big deal uh, in, in year, you know, years later.
I remember when I was working with a guy uh, years ago, I said, I think I'd, I want to be a grinder. He's like, you don't want to do that. You just have to carry too much muscle and eat too much. And I thought, no, actually, I think I do want to do that. It's kind of been the last 10 years of just um, eating and, and going to the gym and training. Um, and that's been a, a huge part of my life, really, is just um, trying to get as fit and strong as possible and you know, be a valuable team player in that, in that way. Obviously, uh, Bermuda was a big moment for me and, and the feeling, you know, once you, once you win is incredible and all that hard work or early mornings, late nights, that just disappears. It's all over, it's all done. I was actually very fortunate. We were doing the, a tour of New Zealand um, with the Cup and we were on the road at the time and I said to Dick, my, my grandma's in, in, in pretty bad shape at the moment and she's probably not going to be with us much longer so would it be alright to take the cup down to, to visit her at her, her place in Taupo. So just off State Highway 1 we, uh, we dropped off and um, head down the drive and Nana was in bed uh, at the time, um, actually in the, in the lounge. Yeah, I managed to walk in with the, with the America's Cup which was a, a big thing um, for me um, mainly because uh, Obviously, yeah, that's where, the, that's where the dream began. What that says, you know, to me is, you know, anything that gets planted in your head is, is there to stay. If that's your goal, then you've just got to stick to it and, and work hard to, to, to paint your own pathway and, and, and walk on it. Rangitoto in the background, the course A in the foreground, and a monster, monster spectator fleet that surround course A. Race six is almost upon us. Luna Rosa, Prada Pirelli, they lead 3-2. Let's just update the crew and see how it rolls. Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli is in deja vu mode, winning the first race of the day with a chance to put some real pressure on the Kiwis with a two-race daily sweep. Now that would be something to cheer about for the massive fan base back in Italy. Race one showed a pre-start game plan for the Italians that was performed to perfection. Utilize the strength that your boat gives you, and Jimmy Spithill did that to perfection. And then you have Emirates Team New Zealand. They are a team now under some serious pressure. The old Emirates Team New Zealand have their back against the wall. They fell off the foils in that pre-start and were never able to recover and effectively handed the race to Luna Rossa. You could see the frustration and disappointment on Peter Burling's face in our post-race interview. But this guy is a true professional. And as we saw yesterday, when under pressure, a guy like Peter Burling can deliver. Race six, the America's Cup match. Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli on port entry. Will it favor them? Is it a coincidence? Not after us five, and Emirates Team New Zealand will take the starboard entry. And now if you're an Italian fan, you're sitting watching this, and you're three, two up Nathan Arteridge, and you go, wow, we might have one hand or a finger on this cup. Well, I tell you what, if they win this race, no one in Italy is going to be going back to bed this morning. <laughs> Shirley Robinson out on chase one. You almost feel like the tension's just ramped up again. 
Stephen, it's a big moment, isn't it? I mean, that Italian boat seems to have options in the starting box, and the Kiwis, they have to unpick that two minutes and, and sort it out. And they did it yesterday, and they won with a big margin. I mean, their boat is fast. They just need to put it in the right place. Up in Heli 1, Freddie Carr, Enios Team UK grinder. What is the course telling you right now? It's a bit of a repeat of race five, to be honest. That left-hand side looks strong. That's not where the spectator fleet is. This huge spectator fleet, I can't emphasize enough. You can see the breeze to the north side of it, the windward side, and then the breeze just lifts up and over. Again, I'm all about the left-hand side here. On the right-hand side, the other thing in this late afternoon, there's some real big holes in the pressure now as well. There's real big patches of no wind. You've got to pick where to choose to tack and jive. This is the race committee. The wind sampling period is complete, and this race will start on schedule. So confirmation from race committee, we have a race. What must be going through the head now of Peter Burling and that afterguard? Oh, pressure. There's no question, right? Listen, we've all, all sailors have gone through slumps or even, even moments of questioning yourself and your strategy and your game plan. He's got to shake that off and uh, just go back to the basics, back to your roots, back to the game plan and, and, and try to make it stick, try to make it work. But realize what the strengths of your competitor is, and that is that high, slow mode of, of the Italians and stay out of that trap. So Kenny then, what, what is he gonna do? What's his game plan? Like we've talked about the tight to lure it off the, the line, being to lure and that's what he executed well yesterday, or you go wide and right. Given he knows the competition has the bigger foils and can handle the slower speeds, what's his option? Well, I, I, I think that, so right now they're coming in from the starboard side. So right now they uh, kind of don't have options. The options are being forced by the port tack boat. So of all times for these for these guys who are questioning, maybe questioning strategy, of all times to have that possible disadvantage starboard tack uh, entry point, this is not one of them. This is, it's not setting up perfectly for them right now. They're gonna have to break this trend. Gonna have to get creative, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. And it's and, and by the way, Spithill did get creative in that last start, did something a little different, and sure enough, it worked. It'll be Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli in on port entry. They proved that you don't have to come in on port to win the race, as they did in the last race, coming in on starboard. And in come Emirates Team New Zealand and the two-minute mark in on starboard. Once again, let the games begin, and who can win the pre-start? Tight again. A few seconds yeah, left right. by the oh. Italians, and all of a sudden, tight right, right behind. And you would think, in a reasonably good position, they have to choose on Emirates Team New Zealand do they want to lead back or do they want to push? You'd be brave to lead back with the small foils, wouldn't you? If you're leading back, trying to kill, it'd be hard. I'd be really shocked if they try and lead them back here. 25. 14 on the base. He's early. No, we'll take, we'll take. They decided to push. Going now. Uh, need to power up, yeah, we'll be good here. Push the boundary. Bander, bander, bander. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for doing it. He's rounding up now on two boards. We're coming down. You'll see him there. We're late by the pink. Yes. Happy to come out relatively fast. Good answer. Good answer. I tried right on pin time, so good call if you want to hang high for a while. We've got through the gas now. Yes. Too early for the pin, guys. Still early here. Yep. Pick up here. Nice. So he didn't lead back. He decided to stay up high and keep it on the Real foils. And he's, five, yeah. he's looking safe. He's not going to get shut out there. It's a question of can they pull the trigger and come rocketing off this line. Luna Russell looked like they are really struggling down there too. He's struggling to get going there. Okay, a little bit of transition, Pete. Four lane, coming, transition on heel a little Coming bit. in with oh, heat right now. Looks like they're going to try to just roll right over the top. Luna Rosa looks late. Trying to build here, guys. Yes. Very right, right, I think, nice yeah. Nice and easy here, Pete. Winding up. Wow. Don't be overly. Jeremy Alfie, stand by for the start. Nice, man. The start of race number six in the match, and just when Emirates Team New Zealand needed to execute a good start, they've done the job. They need the win to stay in the match. Here we go. It's time to bring the heat. 
Absolutely a stunner by Jimmy Spithill. Just when we were crowning him the, the starting champion, he uh, he brought a lemon out there, Nathan. That wasn't even close. Not even close. Well, two things happened there. Pete Burling nailed it. And Jimmy Spittle got it completely wrong. I wonder, Shirley, if it went soft in the starting box or if the wind shifted left, because that was very, very strange to see Lunarossa so late after they got to choose when to go back. Nathan, well, Freddie spotted it from the helicopter. It's really, really patchy now. It's down to sort of six, seven knots at the bottom of the course. Just really bad timing from the Italian outfit. They, they, they came round and just sat in a real light spot and never got going. You could hear a little bit of panic in Jimmy's voice there. This was the first time in this entire series, like, Come on, boys, we've got to get it going, we've got to get it going. And, and uh, obviously there wasn't enough breeze at the angle he wanted to stay on. There was not enough breeze to actually get the thing going. What is surprising, Kenny, is primarily they have been the kings of time or distance in this regatta. Well, the wind gods, uh, you know, they control your ultimate destiny. Uh, and the wind gods, you, you, you can't sail a boat fast through a lull, through a hole in the, in the breeze, whether you want to or not. You can't will it through. The wind gods have to uh, have to support what you want to do. Freddie, you're up in the chopper. You would have had a great bird's eye view of that. Do you think part of that would have been the fact that they jived and sailed through the gas of the boats? Yeah, there, there was a bit of that. Nate, the standout thing for me in that pre-start is when uh, Luna Rossa turned down uh, in the box their mainsail. was right above their mainsail, and it was twisted the wrong way. They basically weren't powered up as they were going into the bottom of the box, and you could just see the speed unwinding on the boat. You could hear the mainsail trimmer saying, power up, power up, power up. He talked about the runner, and it just unwind from that point. They never got back on their feet. And that's why we have you in the sky looking for things that we can't see in the booth. Yeah, that's fantastic. Good, good info. Different times of pressure. And just when you think you can take the confidence of a win, minutes ago, snap. Yeah. Welcome to sport. Don't you love it? Okay. Let's build, then we tack. Surely it looks shifty out there. Uh, we're looking at our uh, charts and all the uh, our wind direction charts, and all of a sudden uh, it looks quite a bit more shifty. Almost fit. We're, we're seeing 15, 18, sometimes 20 degree wind shifts. That probably is not coincidental since we're seeing big holes out on the race course and the wind strength as well. We're quite late in the day, Kenny. Um, and, uh, you know, this is Nathan's backyard. This is where he plays most days when he's at home. And this time of day, you know, it just starts to get really unstable, very patchy. You know, the lower wind speed is getting lower all the time. Although we're still up, top speed still at, at, at nine knots. So it's just up and down, more, um, more unstable than we've seen before. Yeah, surely you're right. You know, I have done a bit of time on the water. Not as much as any of these guys, that's for sure. But um, one thing that happens is, is that after the 4 o'clock, the wind can start to evaporate, especially as that sun gets a bit lower. I've just had a real quick look at some observations all around the city, and it's a little bit of a southwester on the west coast. It's not looking like it's going to come in and shut this down completely, but um, yeah, all the observations right now are well below 10 knots and the angles are starting to move around more than what we saw an hour ago, so could be some opportunities in this one for a couple of shifts, but 400, 400 metres, you're going to need a lot of opportunities in this one, to be honest. Happy right turn. Emirates Team New Zealand in a, in a race they need to win to stay comfortably in this America's Cup match. They've executed a strong start, and on the first leg, they will head into the top gate with a sizable advantage. Make no bones about that. It's a sizable advantage on Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. And they will lead around that top gate. Yeah, he just 
you do have to ask the question, Kenny, when you think you need to put the hammer down, as Luna Rossa Prada Prelli could have, they've dropped the ball. Yeah, but I go back to what Freddie told us with that really great observation from the helicopter and, and how the, the mainsail did not pop. There could have been some sort of power plant problem there, and uh, we'll have to find out. Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli, finally gets to the top gate on the first leg. Check the margin. It's 51 seconds. There's some work to do. I'll say. Yeah, just at that moment where you think that you're getting your hands on the trophy and you're gonna go yeah. four two up. Don't think that. And There's I guarantee none of those guys are thinking yeah. that. We're just yeah. making it all up here, and the fans would be thinking <laughs> that. But the guys on board, they just know one job: execute, they execute, execute. And they'll be kicking themselves that they jived, they didn't get the power back, and they had a bad start. So yesterday it was a technical issue. Uh, Francesco Bruni trouble getting the board down. Again, today, another technical issue. Well, you're, eight, oh, I'm, you're making an assumption there. I'm not making an assumption. I'm saying what we have seen. Yeah, OK, P possibly. I'm not I'm not, not, I'm not prepared to go as far as you're going <laughs> quite yet, no. Pretty steady, same, same, aren't they? We've got the yeah, like faces of Peter Berling, top right, Glen Ashby, bottom yeah. left. They actually sit in the same yeah, cockpit, okay. just on opposite They're sides, and when yeah. they tack and jab, they, they switch yeah. sides here. So, What do you think his right hand is on there, Nathan? He had his right hand on a handle right there. So I'm pretty good, good buddies with Glenny. I ask him every couple of days, and he just smiles. Here's his right hand and spinning says, back and forth. You're not that good a buddy. You're never, never going to find out. <laughs> never going to find out. <laughs> But hey, maybe if we get to talk to him after the race, we can ask him. There you go. I'm not getting amongst this, okay, again. We tried it on Tuke yesterday. <laughs> you bailed him out, by the way. <laughs> his, his, his helmsman wanted to talk to him. We are on the first downward leg of race number six of this America's Cup match. The scoreline at the moment is Luna Rosa Prada apparently three race wins. Emirates Team New Zealand, two race wins. First to seven wins the cup, and we are a long way from that. Hey, Shirley, back to you on kind of the mental and mental side of this thing. We'll soft out of this, boys. Yes. It's interesting so, to me right that the Kiwis Petra. have been a little rough around the edges with, with their with their sailing. And uh, boy, if I were the Italians, I'd be thinking we're missing an opportunity to try to really end yep. this early before these guys get sharper, don't you think? Yeah, I think you're spot on. I mean, I, I wouldn't go as far and say the Kiwis are, are rusty, but you can tell they have not raced all summer like the Italians have. And, and it, just the nuances of it, you know, just the positioning and the timing, you know, it's split seconds. And, you know, that's every race that goes by. Glenn said it this morning. You know, every race that goes by, they're just getting better and better and sharper and sharper. So I think you're absolutely right. Missed opportunity. Emirates team New Zealand have responded as they go down that bottom gate for the first time. And swing it around. And why wouldn't they be happy? You can hear the crowds probably out on course A getting excited about that. They know this team needs to win this race to stay in the cup. You didn't want to go into, or you don't want to go into tomorrow, two races behind. I have to ask the question. Your first race of the day, race number five, and you start, you, you basically don't get it right. Suddenly, you pull off the master stroke. It's like, where has that been? Well, it's all different. This is... Uh, I got Sounds the same, yeah. but it's kind of snowflake yeah. material. Yeah. Everything's yeah. different out here, right? Every race is different. Every every maneuver is hey, different. Boys, every boys. start and procedure is three, different. There's never two, two the one, same, one, and down. you got your chance. It's the beauty of uh, sailing. You get your chance in a second. Emirates Team New Zealand no, leading this up. boat. Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli, the challenger of record. And they're trailing now by a minute and seven seconds. Fans just a little somber at this point, but certainly not out of the match. 
the young girl they keep going to there is Fran Francesco Bruni's daughter. <laughs> she was very excited in the first race and wearing a heart on her sleeve right now, isn't she? She's a little bit deflated. Fair enough. I'd like to continue the conversation about the starts, though, Kenny, because we, we've been sitting here talking racing for three months, and, and you guys have been telling me about things that are set up and the, the software that can you do this and you can do that. And yes, there is the human element, but surely when you get to this point, you know how you're going to play. No, it is, but Nathan, it is the human element. That's the beauty of all this. We can talk about all the computers we want, the timing to the line, everything else. The computer has to, or the, the person has to pull the trigger and steer the boat. And, 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 uh, and, and you know, it's not easy, especially when we're dealing in these marginal foiling conditions. Yeah, and you've got to interpret the information that comes to you, because... The information you get in the computer software for the starting, it'll tell you, okay, you're killing five seconds. But what's it based on? It's based on an average wind speed number, average wind speed direction. If the wind speed changes or you sow through some gas of another boat, you're wrong. So clearly part of the role of the sailors is to understand their software and, and read it and interpret it and make the most of it. You know, Freddie, you've been racing here um, a few weeks ago. How important is the software in the starts and you know, how critical is it to, to really have a human element in it? Oh, the software is everything, like your tactical aid, as we call it, and that's giving Ben and Giles, in our case, all the information back to the line, and critically, Nathan, like the time to burn back to the line, and you live and die off that number. Uh, just to roll on into my next point, mate, the picture is really, really changing up here. At the start of the race, the dead spots of wind were about a tennis court size. We're now looking at big patches of no wind on the water that are about the size of a, of a rugby pitch. So this, is, this race is a long way from over. You talk about the mistake difference. There could be some boats doing some maneuvers and touching down from what I'm seeing up here. It's changing very quickly. And that just adds the intrigue of another race in the America's Two Cup. Right Freddie Carr, the UK, Enios Team UK grinder up in Halley 1. Shirley Robinson, our double Olympic gold medalist, out on Chase Boat 1. So just remember the words of Freddie right now. Could we see touchdowns? That's really interesting. It kind of reminds me of one of the races we had in December between these two boats. It got lighter and lighter, and on that final downwind, they weren't foiling. You know, they, they really struggled to get up and get foiling. So, you know, if, if, if Freddie's right and there are bigger patches of less wind and someone falls in a hole and falls off the foils, well then, as you say, Kenny, you know, these light wind races become very interesting all of a sudden. There you go. Does it, does it, be go, does it go advantage Luna Russell with those bigger foils and, and touching down? It could, but I, we've seen also the Kiwis are just good at keeping those average speeds high. Remember in that same race, Nathan, um, I believe Blair Took asked, hey, do, do you think we should jive instead of tack going upwind to stay on the foil? So that's how important staying on the foils is. So important. You live and die on your apparent wind. Your apparent wind gives you the speed, it gives you the lift from the foils, and you now if it's too light to tack, sometimes these guys might have to jive their own. Shirley Robinson out on chase one. Shirley, if you're Luna Rossa, what are your options right now? Well, keep going, hope for the best. I mean, we've been watching the Kiwis a lot. Stephen, they, when they're off on their own, they look so slick. They're sailing like like a small floating boat, like a moth, you know, heels on top of them. Bow down, they just really look like they just get going and get rumbling uh, once they get free of, of the competition. It's so impressive. Virtual Eye giving you an understanding of where both these boats are on the course. Course A, as Emirates Team New Zealand come into the top gate for the third time and will complete the halfway stage of race number six in this 36th nice America's Cup match. Five away from their feet. Three, two, one. Oh, Emirates Team that. New Zealand rounding the top gate, heading for the fourth leg now, downwind. A minute a seven seconds there, yeah. was the last yeah, advantage. What do you need, brother? Nice. Oh, a little bit less help. Yeah, come here. That's real nice. See you laying that other gun. Uh, negative. Yeah, this is about to turn yeah, into a really job. big lead here. There, there's still one more maneuver away on 
on uh, Luna Rossa, uh, and uh, uh, I think they're going to struggle to make this gate, Nathan, and that one more attack. Not only is it another attack, another maneuver, another loss, but they're going to be following the Kiwis to that side of the race course. They don't even get a split here. Yeah, these guys are yep. sort of going bad to us. Maybe they can climb into a high mode and just lay. If they lay there, it's definitely a, a big, big saving. Yeah, nice, but, uh, nice left here. It's going to be well over a minute by the time they yeah. get around the mark, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, they're, they're going to make me look Ball bad here. here. Maybe make it. Yeah, two. they do. Of course. One. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Okay. thanks, fellas. Well, they picked, they picked up two seconds on the upwind leg. Did Luna Rosa Prada for rally? But that's still a minute and five seconds behind. Emirates Team New Zealand. And if it stays like this, Kenny, if it stays like this, and we we talk about the, the, the confidence that Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli have gained, or three race wins, but then if it stays like this, and they get bashed here, they're being bashed. What does that do to you no, psychologically? They're being bashed for one reason, one reason only. All this is doing, all today is done at the end of the day. If this turns out to be the, you know, the, the, the lead for, for the Kiwis remains around the course. All this means is the pressure is turned up on the starting helms. This is becoming a, that's all you guys at this press conference are gonna talk about tonight. That's all the sailing world is talking about. Can Peter Burling or Jimmy Spithill get the start right? So, uh, you know. So Kenny, Kenny what you're saying is that it's actually gonna be the best sailor who wins the America's Cup and maybe not the fastest boat. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. It's a big call, but yeah, a if you look at six races now, it's, it's a Well, pretty... okay, which one's the faster boat? Well, they've all said there's nothing in it. Exactly. So what a, what a great thing for, for the America's Cup and for sailing if it is the better sailor. I'd like to, the definition of a faster boat, I still, I don't think we know what the faster boat is here yet. That's, I, that's still my... Uh... There have been questions saying, oh, wonder what it would be like in windier conditions and would people get to see potentially how quick Terehutai is. Well, remember, it's not, about, it's not about the high speed. I keep saying it's about the lap time. In any given wind strength, it's about how quick you do these loops around the race course. The high speed doesn't matter. It's almost like how how but does much the fast boat win the America's Cup? Your, your, your definition of fast is incorrect, my friend. But we're just picking on Kenny a bit at the it, moment. We'll, we'll stop in a second. Oh, it's almost oh, like how irrelevant it is time between the boats at the marks. That's how that's irrelevant. Ouch! Look at the the biometrics. The grinders doing all their work. Look at the gap closing on 820 meters between the two as we're about to complete leg number four in this sixth race of the 36th America's Cup, and it is Emirates Team New Zealand. You can imagine the noise being made on those spectator boats that are sitting outside a cracking virtualized stadium. And Emirates Team New Zealand complete the fourth leg and will hit up for the second to last time on this course. Why wouldn't that crowd be cheering? Quite surprised they're not jumping up and down. But they are happy on a glorious Saturday nice, afternoon in Auckland today, City. Right? Yeah. Nice. Minus two. Seconds. Hey, Traveller here. Yeah, it's a bit marginal yeah. if you yeah. can make it. Yeah. 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 Right. We're you thinking one and then right. I don't yeah, know about yeah, you, awesome. but the body language and the tone yeah, of the way they're talking now has come right off the pedal. Yeah, but again, I, I, I still maintain that as soon as they finish, it's irrelevant going back into the to the barn tonight, and uh, they're going to be ready to go tomorrow. Let's go win a start. Just remember, the Italians are an emotional people, and that's what I love about it. I don't know if that Spithill guy is, though. We're going to call him quasi-Italian. Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli about to complete the fourth leg. Uh, and three, the gap two, has lengthened one. somewhat on the downward leg in favour of Emirates Team New Zealand. The gap now, one minute and 13 seconds. Surely, one thing you keep talking about is how different the Kiwi boat looks when they kind of get out in the open race course. A big difference between last race and this race is the Kiwis kept it close. They didn't gain. They didn't really lose in a tough spot. 
but the Italians are not able to keep it close right now. This is a, this is a whitewash going on out a here. White. Yeah. yeah, Kenny, I mean, I'm sure we'll, we'll go through the numbers later, but they just, that's just how it looks really from on the water, that as soon as they're free and they're sailing their own race, they, they just have a, they have a groove, they have an extra kind of gear. And, and for those uh, viewers who sail small foiling boats, you, you'll recognize it. it just, Pete Burling just looks like he's, like he's in his moth, you know, feeling every gust and, and really, you know, really sailing the boat well. I mean, I think we have to give credit to Pete and Blair and his team. I mean, under tremendous pressure, and they executed that start well. As you say, they're learning quickly. And, and Nathan, you've sailed against them a lot. I mean, they're good under pressure. And um, I, I, I just get the feeling that he's really kind of getting his confidence now. Yeah, Shirley, you're spot on there. If you've won an America's you Cup and you've won a gold medal, you're take. bloody good under pressure, that's for sure. They're very good sailors, and I can tell you one thing. They might have felt a bit of stress between races, but look at this. They're, they're coming out and they're storming this one. Let's go up to Halley 1, because, Freddie, the last time we spoke, you said there were big patches of nothingness. What are you seeing now? It's coming a little bit earlier. Yeah, those, those patches of nothingness uh, are still there, and it's still the top right hand side of the course that poses that risk to the boats. Where wherever it's Team New Zealand have just tacked, I've just slipped into spying mode a bit up here, which is great for me. And I was watching both boats tack, and I just saw the two aft grinders on board Emirates Team New Zealand spin round, and it looks like they're flying the boat to me. I think that's Andy Maloney and Josh Jr. And as a grinder to think that you go around the lured mark, your max heart rate, trimming everything on, they say stand by tack and you have to completely decompress and then fly that boat in the turn. That was pretty awesome to see from up here. You jealous? Oh, I'd love some time off the handles, that's for sure. I just spin my arms all day. I don't get to do any of the fun stuff. <laughs> Freddy Carr, the NLC UK yeah. grinder up on Alley One for us today. And, and he talked in about those biometrics, three, didn't he? And the, suddenly they, they come down a little bit, but then the tacking will go up a little bit for these uh, grinders. Pretty calm team, that lot. They do it a little different. And Freddie, uh, coming back to you for a second, they, you were explaining to us this morning about how the Italians do it. Maybe a little different from some of the other boats uh, as far as grinding and, and what they're grinding and how much they have to actually grind. Yeah, there's, there's a couple of ways of, uh, of skinning the problem of moving the traveler. The traveler is the most dynamic thing in the boat. It controls your roll control, so how much the boat is leaning over. You can use an accumulator, which is a hydraulic bomb. You could charge that up and give your mainsail trimmer unlimited power on the traveler. That's a lot of hard work, but it's a very good way of doing it. Or you can sail more live. And I think what we see here between Emirates Team New Zealand, they charge a bomb and then and then uh, give the mainsail trimmer unlimited traveler power. And Emirates Team New Zealand sail a little bit more live, but what that allows them to do is their grinders to go low windage. And I really do like the low windage kneeling grinding style that Prada have got. One might suggest in this race right now that Emirates Team New Zealand have dropped a bomb on Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli as they head into the top gate for the final time and look towards that homeward leg. Emirates Team New Zealand trailing by a race win. And on the current scale of what we're watching, they should level this race up. Around the top mark they go and head home to complete race six. Coming up, wind here, please. Yeah, yeah. For sure or not? Uh, use at the moment. Happy yeah, to go earlier. Yeah. Yep, go down. Go down. Yep. Perfect. Nice gotcha. So, Freddie, interesting comment you made before about how the power's going to use. My. I've been trying to work out who trims the main on Emirates Team New Zealand because Glenn Ashby's always on the leeward side of the boat. Do you guys have any idea who's trimming the main sail? I don't. I'd be I'd be having a guess, but my guess is that Glenn Ashby sets up like the sail shape potentially, 
and maybe Pete has the roll control. So it's much like having the tiller and the main sheet in your hand if you're a 49er sailor. And, and like you, Nath, like growing up, going through the 49er, maybe that's what it's used to. He's, he's able to con perfectly control the roll of the boat with a twist grip for the traveler and I also his wheel and the rudder movement. Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli for the final time around the top gate in this sixth race of the America's Cup. Gone very quiet Five, on board. Okay. Two, two, one, one, here we go. Clear. Mark running they do and head home. And it's now one minute and 22 seconds. Oof. That's a, a lead and a half. Yeah. Still good pass here. Back to the modes for a yep. second, Nathan. You know, we, we were looking at statistics earlier where this boat averages somewhere around two or three knots faster the, the Kiwi boat does around the race course. Two or three knots faster. But they've actually been traveling upwards of 1,600 meters on average further around the race course. This low and fast mode, 1,600 meters is, is half a leg. That's how, that's how, much, that's how much distance they're, they're doing. It, it's actually an incredible amount of extra distance. It's a huge amount of extra distance, and I think it's all down to the design philosophy of the boat. It's not because Peter and the guys want to go low and fast. It's because of those smaller foils. You see, they're just dropping the foil there now. They've got the torpedo bulb on the foil. They've got a much smaller area, and the only way you can get that foil to work in its range is to actually go a faster mode. So up when you'll naturally see them going lower and faster, and the sail plan will need to, to balance and match that. So far, we haven't seen many windy races, nothing over 12 knots. If we get a day of over 15 knots of breeze in the coming days, I just can't wait to see how fast that boat's going to go because everything that I know about the design of these boats tells me that those foils are going to be absolute rockets when it gets windy. We are in the final the seconds of the up, sixth race of the 2021 Today's America's the Cup match. Yeah. Emirates Team New Zealand came in trailing by one. They have produced what you might call are? a super Saturday performance when it mattered. Emirates Team Gunning. New Zealand come across the line nice and we are still <laughs> locked back. up in this match. On, it is now three all between Emirates Team New Zealand and Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. Regatta starts tomorrow. You heard Dan Ashby say that as well? Oh, I did? Yeah, I heard him in the comms in the background. He's a smart guy. Yeah, you guys must be linked together, but he's right. You guys are right. The regatta starts tomorrow. We're back to effectively zero all. Yeah. I was talking to Shirley Robinson pre this race, and there was one line that came to mind, and when we think about where we're at right now as we wait for Luna Rossa Prada to to cross the line is, who blinks first? Who blinks first? All on the start right now. I, I hate to put the pressure on these two boys, but uh, Mr. Burling and Mr. Spithill, this is starting to ratchet the pressure up because it's coming very obvious to me, and I think most of the rest of the sailing world win the start, win the race. I've got to say, if I'm, I'm the leader of any of these campaigns, I'm going, oh, I don't know what to do. How, how, how are we going to win a race? How can sail. we take control? No, you can't take control. Let the sailors sail. You've gotten to, they've gotten to, to this yep. point, and uh, do not try to uh, change things up now. Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli, finally coming into the finish zone for race six. And it's a start that was costly. Freddie Carr saw things that we didn't yeah, see and told us exactly what two, went down, one, and it's down. turned into a race loss. But Come it's on, still three all no problem, in the yeah, America's yeah. Cup match. No it's anybody still. Confirmation of the result in race six of this America's Cup match. Emirates Team New Zealand lock it up at three all with a one minute and 41 second victory.
getting tired of saying we're, we're a broken record here, Nathan, right now, but this is over right after it started. This is uh, Peter Burling and company pulling the trigger at the right time, recognizing that their competitor was weak in that position at the bottom of our screen. They couldn't accelerate on Luna Rosa. Freddie Carr thought they might have had some problems popping their mainsail through their twin skin mainsail. But one thing is for sure, they were going 10 knots slower at the, at the start of the race and already 50 meters behind. And that is a lousy place to be if you're an Italian. And that is one heck of a place to be if you are a Kiwi and a Kiwi fan. These guys look solid this race. They just put the pedal down. It's like they never even looked back a single time. They, they just, they didn't, they didn't try to control the race course. They didn't try to do anything, but just let their boat, let their weapon just do its thing. And it was really obvious and it was really pretty to watch. It's very impressive to watch. And again, it just comes down to that start. If you get clear and get fresh air, the rich get richer. That's how foiling racing generally unfolds. You, you sail fast and Look at these overhead shots. That boat just looks it just looks sexy, doesn't it? Just the, the lines of it, the foils. Either boat, they just they just look amazing. The foils and, and away they go. And look at this lead, it just kept growing and growing the whole way around. Now we're all questioning who has the faster boat. Well when your lead keeps growing like that, it starts to give you a little bit of an indication who has the quicker boat. Coming into the finish line, it was a uh, very clean, easy uh, win for the for the Kiwis and and uh, Glenn Ashby said, "Hey, regatta starts tomorrow," and he's exactly right. Regatta starts tomorrow. They could, you know, every once in a while you got to give your boy a pat on the back. And Mr. Burling, after crushing that start, absolutely deserved a pat on the back. So where does it stand now? The match in the 36th America's Cup. No different than it was from 24 hours ago. We're locked up. It's just one more race win apiece. Three all. You need seven to lift the old mug. Let's go on board Emirates Team New Zealand and get some feedback as to what they thought about that win. We'll hear today from flight controller Blair Tuke. And Blair, you've got to say, you guys nailed that start. How satisfying was that? Yeah, that was a good one to have the boat speed like that. You know, big speed difference was very pleasing. And, you know, just like yesterday, a really good reply from the, from the guys. So, yeah, good way to finish a, uh, another tight day. So, Blair, from your position on the boat, it seems like Peter can't really see too much to lure to the boat because of lack of windows. We think we've seen a screen, but that's for another day. Are you calling what you see with the other boat? When did you recognize the other boat in that pre-start may not be able to get up and get going? You had a real chance to put them away. Yeah, I'm actually on the same side as Pete, so uh, see about as much as him to lure, uh, maybe a bit less. So. Yeah, you know, the guys that were, were down there did a great job. Joshy and uh, Lenny, you probably get some of those comms, but Josh, Josh's comms you might not get. But, yeah, there's put a heck of a lot of work into that, and they called that one beautifully. And, yeah, the boat uh, obviously had that big speed difference at the start like that. Very pleasing. Hey, Blair, nice work. You know, it's great to tie it up. I'm sure it's a, a sigh of relief once again, and we start again tomorrow. I've got a bit of a question for you about the teamwork. You kind of alluded to the fact that there's, there's more than just the three names we talk about a lot. You've got Josh and Andy at the back. Give us a bit of an insight to how the jobs are shared out a bit and how much of a teamwork sport this is. Yeah, well, I guess with, with our cockpits, it's, uh, it's quite hard to see everyone on board, all 11 of us, but obviously... For the grinding guys, these uh, lighter days is pretty challenging. A lot of tacking jewels, so it's a um, huge effort from them. So, yeah, you don't see them too often, but there's a lot of tired boys here. And, uh, you know, very lucky that we've got uh, sports people from a lot of different sort of areas that have come together to be a, uh, you know, a really good group. So it's a heck of an effort from them. And then, yeah, like you mentioned, Josh, Andy Man just here, um, you know, doing a great job for us. And, you know, just how we all work together is... Uh, it's coming along nicely, but yeah, it's a, still got a lot of work to do. This is a tight battle. Blair, just one final thought. Was that was that your uh, uncle, Ian Tuke, the squadron leader of the RNZ uh, flyover? Yeah, that was him in the uh, 757, so that was uh, 
that was pretty awesome. I mean, we were just coming around North Head and uh, just as they came right overhead and uh, we saw all the boats out here at the same time as they sort of went over. So that was a that was a cool moment. All right. Well, it's another moment to cherish. But guess what? We're back at 0-0 tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. Let's go on Luno Rosa Prada, Prada Pirelli. Jimmy Spittle is standing by. Uh, Jimmy, do you want to talk us through the start? Yeah, basically, we were, so we were happy with our positioning. Unfortunately, we just got caught in a real light spot. We just could not get the boat going uh, back to the line. Almost a bit of a reversal of the first start uh, where the other guys, you know, sort of fell into a light spot and they couldn't get going. So, yeah, it was unfortunate, but, you know, not a lot of passing lanes from then on, unfortunately. It was just too big a jump, um, you know, after the start. Jimmy, Freddie Carr is up in the helicopter today, and he thought he saw a, a, a time where your mainsail didn't pop or it, you were having to sail inverted, and you might have gotten slow there. Was there any mechanical problem in the pre-start that, that, uh, that kind of put you in a tough spot? Uh, not that I know of. I think it was just a matter of just getting caught in, in no wind, uh, unfortunately. And so, yeah, we just could not get the boat going back to the line, and... Yeah, just one of those things on a day like today, you know, it's a little bit of a minefield out there, especially down in the start box. And, yeah, we just unfortunately couldn't get the boat uh, to accelerate. Yeah, Jimmy, it looked like obviously a bit of a tough start. bit more of a big picture question for you here. You know, it's um, it's a real mental game going on there right now, and I can, I can imagine there's a bit of pressure, you know, with the, the helmsman trying to, you know, win these starts. How, do you, how are you going to get some momentum? How are you going to win two races on one day? What's, what's the goal? Well, the goal is always just to win one at a time. You know, we're not looking too far ahead. Uh, you know, each day we sort of come in and try to focus on the one ahead and just like we did that one. So there'll be quite a lot of lessons learned from both races today and, you know, technique. And, yeah, we'll, we'll all go back as well, I'm sure, the other guys and really just try and come back again fighting and, and stronger, ready to roll. One final thought, Jimmy. This is a hell of an America's Cup match, isn't it? Oh, it's what we live for. I mean, this is what it's all about. Uh, great sporting battle, great to see all the spectators, the, the Air Force come out this morning. It was, uh, yeah, all in all a great day. We're back to even and, yeah, can't wait for tomorrow. Thanks, bud. Look at that. The spectator fleet, thousands of boats heading home as we look at the numbers from race number six. Race number six had a little more of the same. That uh, upwind and downwind speed is absolutely an advantage to, to the Kiwis. Uh, distance sailed actually to the Kiwis as well for the first time in a while. And that, that would have been because the Kiwis could probably tack in these puffy, shifty conditions exactly where they wanted to, Nathan, and, and sail a little bit shorter course. But when you win, all, as we've said many times before, you win all for three of those categories, the upwind speed, the downwind speed, and the distance sailed, hmm, you're going to win the race. Let's take a look at the worm because the efficiency analysis we're looking at here is how it was hard for Luna Rossa to get up to speed. Well, you just look at the worm. Look at the very start here. Look how much slower they are at the beginning of the race. And took him a very long time to recover there. That, you know, they were below five knots. Have a look for that. It's, it's a really slow start to the race for them. Key moment, as, as Kenny has said, sounds like we're at broken record. Start. Yeah, broken record. So they've set up in, remember, we talked earlier about know your boat. So Prada sets up in a position that they have absolutely decided they like, that high, slow mode. But man, you better be able to pull a trigger when you want to. And Burling and I think Glenn Ashby down on that lured side, they pulled the trigger at the right time and just ripped over the top of the Italian entry and, and absolutely smoked them off the start. They just couldn't get going on Luna Rosa. As Jimmy Spithill said, it could have been sailing through some, some bad air between the two boats that are spinning and circling around. But man, this is not a view you want to see if you're an Italian fan. One boat just pedaled down and the other boat glued to the water and it turned into a race that uh, really was over right at the start. When that start gun went, it was over and good on the Kiwis for then stretching from there. They did not look back and never gave their opponent any opportunity to pass. Very impressive. Very well done in a pressure spot by Peter Berlin. Yeah, bang on, Kenny, when you think about it, they needed to execute a start and they came, they were flying, they got it that, that on point. Look at that. Look at that spectator fleet coming home. Shirley Robinson out of the water. Shirley, what did you make of today? Oh, goodness. It's, it's full on, isn't it? I mean, the pressure 
is building. You put yourself in, in that spot, helming one of these boats in a must-win starting situation. Uh, it's it's full on. Also, I think we're seeing the Kiwis really find their feet as well. And as soon as as soon as they get out and free, I, you know, I think they're a force. They uh, if they get more confident, couple that with what we think is a little bit of extra pace, they're going to be formidable. But what an America's Cup! It's great to have been out here, especially with so many Kiwis. Incredible sight, Stephen. Up in the air, uh, Halley one, uh, Freddie Carr, Ineos Team UK grinder. Surely, surely gives the impression that uh, Team New Zealand can get better. What do you make of what you've seen today? Yeah, what I've seen today is there's all the talk about Emirates Team New Zealand being faster than Prada and maybe we do see that they they sail away when they are in front the Kiwis but man Prada their tacks are really really good their low speed maneuvering other than the uh, pre-start in race six has been brilliant I think this racing is going to get more and more combative over the next few days more tacking jewels more fish tailing in there is a bit about that Luna La Rossa package that I really like, and they'll be pretty happy with where they are right now. Day three of racing is over, and look at that, three wins apiece. Who wins the America's Cup, the 36th edition? Who knows right now, but that's the standings. Three race wins apiece. Tomorrow, we are back into it on the Hauraki Golf. Will we see course C that everybody wants? Port entry in race seven will be Luna Rossa, Starboard, Emirates Team New Zealand. They'll flip that for race number eight. Nathan Outeridge, Kenny Reid, time to wrap up a, a, another crazy day of racing. K Kenny, what do you make of it? Wh where's this match going? Two, two starts, the boat coming from starboard, first of all, one both starts. Um, we got to see the the Kiwi Na the Kiwi Air Force, and here we see the Kiwi Navy coming in off the, ra uh, <laughs> hey, off the race down. course. <laughs> settle down. <laughs> uh, hey, I, I'm still not sure which boat I'd pick. And at the end of the day, Nathan, that's what it all boils down to. Which boat would you pick? Because they are really, for, for boats designed to the same rule, these are very different boats. I can't tell you which boat I would pick, you know. It's a little bit forecast dependent. I think Francesco Bruni said in his interview, he was very happy with his boat in these conditions. Looking at the forecast for tomorrow, much of the same, a little bit light. Similar stuff we're gonna see tomorrow. It's from the east again. Roll on to Monday. We're seeing 10, 15 knots. We're seeing more breeze coming. So that might change which boat you want to be in. But for me today, today was a day two halves, you know. Great first race for Prada. And then Team New Zealand come out storming in the second one. No one can get any momentum. Momentum can be everything in sport. But right now we have a tied ball game. The defender, Emirates Team New Zealand, clawed another one back. But when they claw it back, they know how to do it. They did it in style against a Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli team that is ice cool. They don't give you anything. And now they will go home and reassess, as will Emirates Team New Zealand. We ask the question again before we head to racing tomorrow. Who do you think wins this America's Cup? Join us at 4 p.m. local tomorrow and find out.
Today's America's Cup Racing is brought to you by Medallion.